Okay, so we're going to recap here and go over what, uh, what we've looked at already in this lesson. And just, we're going to take, uh, this is the jurisdictionary lawsuit flow chart. And in it you'll see that the first thing that happens is the complaint. And in the complaint, it states, he says, it states all rights to sue causes of action plus all facts and law that control the outcome if the facts and law can be proved. And we see that the court battle is stated on paper, starting with the complaint and the service of the summons. The complaint has to be a notice that the plaintiff was injured. The, the plaintiff is the party suing. The facts that show the injury and the law that applies if the facts are proven and the damages or money that the plaintiff is requesting if victorious. Next we have the flurry of motions and it can be a motion to dismiss or to strike or to require a more definite statement. And the motions are entered to move the court and make judgments about the complaint trying to get a dismissal of certain parts of it or all of it and have it stricken through a motion to dismiss or a motion to strike or a motion for a more definite statement. To make it more clear, in other words, maybe one of the points in the, in, in the um, complaint is, can be read two different ways or whatever, so you need to know what exactly they're talking about there and you're going to ask for a, a motion for a more definite statement of item 2 and item 8 or whatever. Then comes the answer there. And the answer answers the complaint one allegation at a time separately admitting or denying each allegation. And the defendant's going to produce a written reply that's going to be entered into the court and sent to the opposing side. And um, then comes the discovery. And discovery prompts requests for admi admissions, requests for production, interrogatories, depositions, and court orders. Um, depositions, which are sworn answers to prearranged questions in front of a notary. In other words, you can send um, the bank president or the sheriff a list of questions that you need answers to. And he'll have to appear in front of a notary and answer those questions one by one, and the notary will note his responses and write it all down and document it and then put it in a sealed envelope and send it off to the clerk of the court. The judge will then open the sealed envelope and make copies and hand them out to you so you'll have answers to the, to the um, questions that were asked. And then you can subpoena people to appear to testify or bring documents with them to testify to the court. And that's the subpoena ducis tecum. And lastly, if things haven't worked out by now and no agreement is reached, then trial starts. If you wish to get a good basic synopsis of how our current legal court systems operate and learn advantages you can use, study the jurisdictionary course written by an attorney in Florida, Frederick Graves. It's about $250. And it's a very complete uh, education in what the current court systems use, which is, of course, not common law, but... The alternative is to take whatever plea bargain the DA or the bank offers you or pay an exorbitant amount to an attorney who can never really represent you over, over the court or the government because they're sworn to serve the court and the government.